Nom Nom delivers fresh food with whole ingredients, backed by veterinarian science. Science tells us that a dog's health starts in the bowl, so improving their diet is one of the best ways to help them live a long and happy life. Nom Nom's food is full of proteins your dog loves and the vitamins and nutrients they need to thrive. All you have to do is order, pour, and serve. Ready to make the switch to fresh? Order Nom Nom today. Go to https colon slash slash trinom.com forward slash curveball and get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's https colon slash slash T-R-Y-N-O-M dot com forward slash curveball. Plus, Nom Nom comes with a money back guarantee. If your dog's tail isn't wagging within 30 days, Nom Nom will refund your first order. No fillers, no nonsense, just Nom Nom. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, we're going to be talking about dental education as I am joined by doctor, podcast host, and professor, Dr. George J. Schmidt. Dr. Schmidt is passionate about dental education, so we're going to be talking to him about his story and about his amazing bio and all that he's doing for dental education. So, Dr. Schmidt, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, you know, Curtis, thank you so much for having me on the program. Uh, I really appreciate and uh, looking forward to spending some time with you here. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, Curtis. So I'm a full-time uh, practicing dentist in northern New Jersey, but I'm also an adjunct clinical assistant professor at NYU and also at uh, Rucker School of Dental Medicine. I'm not, as you mentioned, I'm the host of the Academy of General Dentistry podcast series. Uh, I'm active in organized dentistry, uh, both locally and nationally, as well as dental education, and uh, and that's one of my passions. Okay, well, you, you you're also a, a professor too, so tell us tell us all about that and what you teach. Yeah, so I uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, pro- a clinical assistant professor at NYU New York College of Dentistry and Rucker School of Dental Medicine. And so um, I've really taught over the years dental education at every level. So from the undergraduate level all the way to the postgraduate level. Um, and I've taught in various different departments in there. And, and currently I teach uh, how to place restore dental implants to other dentists, uh, you know, locally here at the universities. But I also do some lecturing across the country uh, where I talk about a variety of different things, in, including dentistry and, and some practice management uh, and some motivational stuff as well. So it's one thing to be a dentist, but what what made you actually want to focus and be so passionate about dental education? Yeah, you know, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, you know, when I was, uh, you know, during my uh, sort of undergraduate dental career, I was exposed to a lot of different folks, uh, you know, as you can imagine, with all the different lectures and learning opportunities that we had. And, and I was always intrigued. Uh, just about about the interaction, helping others, you know, being able to uh, present material and and stay current and things like that. And it's something that I had always wanted to do. So when I came out of school, I first started uh, just, you know, practicing dentistry and learning my craft and, and all that. And, and I did that for about 10 years, I'd say. Uh, and then I went back to the school and I, and, uh, and I said, hey, you know, this is something I think I'd like to do. And I, I had known a few folks over there and they... Um, and they sort of uh, introduced me to into the field, and um, it's something that uh, I really enjoy doing. I, I love working with uh, younger dentists and teaching folks, and, and sharing some of my experiences over the years. And uh, you know, as you can imagine, what to do, what not to do, things that you can, uh, you know, that I've that I've learned, and I, and I really do enjoy sharing that to with other folks. How do you feel about the uh, state of the dental industry, and what what do you feel is going? Yeah. So, you know, that's a really, that's a really good question. That's also a really good question. So, um, you know, I'm excited 
from a clinical standpoint, I think this is probably, you know, the golden age of dentistry. We can do so many things now that we couldn't do, let's say, 20 or 30 years ago. You know, for our, our ability to save teeth and replace teeth, uh, you know, are, it's just amazing. I mean, we all have grandparents and great grandparents and things like that, even parents for that matter, that don't have teeth because, you know, it used to be that we just pull a bad tooth. But now there are so many new exciting materials and different things where we can, you know, we can save teeth. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Uh, you know, but there are some challenges in, you know, in, uh, in the industry as well. Uh, a lot of those have to do with, um, you know, the rising amount of debt for some of the younger students. I mean, some of these kids are coming out of dental school with, with nearly a half a million dollars in debt. They've got to go out and start a family and they've got to uh, practice and things like that. So I think, um, you know, for, for the younger, for the younger uh, dentists out there, I think, I think there's some challenging times in, in that standpoint. We also have, um, you know, uh, different types of dentistry now that are available. So it used to always be, you know, it was sort of the mom and pop uh, dental office where you'd, you'd, you'd go out and you'd open your own office and you'd be there and you'd, you know, practice during the week. And now we have much bigger entities that have entered into the arena. Uh, we call them DSOs or dental service organizations where they've come out and really put a corporate layer to dentistry, which is good and bad. You know, it's good for a lot of people. I think it brings dentistry to the masses, if you would, and it opens a lot of opportunities for folks that might not have had care otherwise. Um, but but there's also some challenges with that as well. So give the listeners some best practice tips on, on improving or maintaining oral, oral health. Well, I think one of the best things you could do, of course, as we always say, and, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but of course, you got to br brush and floss, right? Flossing is incredibly important uh, because you can brush, you know, three or four times a day, but you're never going to get that food, uh, you know, that's maybe stuck in and around your teeth there. So you've got to floss, really important. Uh, we always recommend you, you go to your dentist for at least uh, twice a year to make sure that you, you know, get, every, get your teeth cleaned. And, you know, that goes for folks that have dentures as well, or a lot of Crown and Bridge where they may have had teeth restored and they don't think of themselves as necessarily having their own teeth, but it's also incredibly important to make sure that you go see your dentist or your local uh, dental office so that they can help you, you know, manage your care. And it's also important. It's incredibly important that you do that because you want to make sure that uh, your dentist checks you for oral cancer. It's one of the big, uh, you know, one of the big killers that we have out there. And, you know, a lot of times people are very diligent about it going to their physician, but it's not something that the physician would typically do to look into your mouth. So when you go to your dentist, not only do they check your teeth and your gums to make sure that everything is healthy, but they're also going to check and take a look and make sure that you don't have any any oral cancer or anything like that or any lesions that might have uh, have some issues. But I think those are the big things. I mean, you want to make sure, uh, you know, of course, it's okay. people think sweets and so on and so forth are not good for your teeth. And, and I do understand that. Uh, I'm a big sweet fan myself. Just make sure that you brush your teeth after. Uh, you can try to keep everything as clean as you can. So talk about dental implants. Tell us what they are and, and, and how they can help people who might need them and, and who who might be candidates for them. Yeah, so that's another great question. So dental implants are one of the things that are you know making the profession very exciting now because a dental implant is actually, the best way to describe it is a false tooth root. So for many folks that have lost a tooth, uh, you know, uh, previously options years back, the options might have been to have a denture or a partial denture or something that snaps in and out that you've got to take out and clean. Or it might have been where there's a fixed bridge that replaces your tooth that's sort of glued into place. But a dental implant is actually a titanium screw, for lack of a better word, that goes right in where the tooth root used to be. And we attach a crown or a tooth on top of that. And, you know, these are used uh, in a variety of different ways. You can replace one tooth. Uh, you can replace multiple teeth with dental implants. Uh, you can replace all your teeth with dental implants. And for a lot of people that have a denture, I mentioned a denture earlier, that might be a little loose or mobile, and there's plenty of those folks around there where they have a denture that's moving around a little bit. There's actually ways now where you can put in just a very select few implants where you can snap your denture on. And it makes a world of difference for folks out there when they chew and eat their food. So uh, there's a lot of different ways that implants can be used, uh, many, many different ways. It's a tremendous service to a lot of people. And uh, if, you, if you have loose or missing teeth or you have a denture that's a little bit loose, you know, I would encourage you to go out and uh, perhaps get talk to your dentist or talk to, uh, to someone and get a consultation about that and see if you might be a candidate, which is the other question you asked me. So in order to put a dental implant in, you've got to have enough bone to support the implant. 
And you have to have bone in all directions. Just as if you were going to put a, a screw or, or hang a picture on your wall, and if you're going to put something in, you have to have enough surrounding structure so that it supports it. And so you've got to be evaluated by your, your dental practitioner to make sure that you have, have enough bone. Now, there's ways you can grow bone and things like that if you don't have it, but um, that's a little bit more uh, complicated than we want to get into the discussion here. But um, a, a lot of people are candidates for implants, and the best way that you could uh, you could sort of find that out would be to seek, seek some professional help and, and, and ask your local dentist. What about uh, cosmetic den- dentistry? Talk, talk a little bit about that and exp- explain what that is and, and how it's different than, you know, just regular dentistry. Yeah. So cosmetic dentistry is another great field. And this is where I think, you know, the material, uh, the new materials that we have have really, really come into play because we can replace teeth and make them look lifelike, real, and, and fantastic in so many different ways because of the materials that we have. But cosmetic dentistry is really anything that you, a patient, would think improves their smile, their look, the way they look. And that can range anything from bleaching, where you can actually whiten and brighten your natural teeth, to perhaps putting some veneers or some coverings over the face of your teeth to make them straighter, or whiter, closed spaces um, and, and gaps and things like that. So you can we can actually put thin porcelain coverings over the top of the teeth, much like a snap-on fingernail would be. Or we can use uh, crowns, which are basically uh, porcelain coverings that go over the top of the teeth and circle, circle right around the tooth. Um, or even implants or some combination. So cosmetic dentistry is a very, very broad subject area, very broad topic. And, and uh, even even we have the ability to use some lifelike materials, and call them composite materials, which are plastic type materials that can go in and bond over the top of the teeth and reshape them and make them look really fantastic. So we're really excited about that in dentistry nowadays. Like I said, it's not like it was 20, 30, 40 years ago because we've got just some incredible materials and options for folks to really improve their smile. And, uh, and it's always exciting for us as dentists when we have a patient come in and when we're able to provide those kind of services, because you can literally change someone's life course, as you can imagine, by just reinvigorating or changing their smile. Well, you also are a podcast host, so tell, tell the listeners about your podcast and where we can find it and what we can expect when we listen to it. Yeah, thanks for asking. Thanks for asking about that. Well, my podcast or our podcast, the Academy of General Dentistry podcast series, is something that we're very proud of. It's a podcast series that we we put on, and you can find us on uh, Spotify and SoundCloud um, and uh, the Apple Podcasts, the Academy of General Dentistry. You can find us there just under the Academy of General Dentistry. But it's, uh, it's mainly a specific uh, show for other dental professionals, although we do have some things on there that would be relevant to the general public. Um, but we're, we're very proud of that. And it's uh, we, we put a new show on every two weeks where we have various guests, leaders in the industry, folks that are highly respected. And we have them come on and I talk to them about a variety of different things, much like we're doing here. We talk about cosmetic dentistry and implants and the state, all the things that we just kind of touched on. We have great guests that come on and they talk about those kind of things. And, um yeah, so I mean, although it's mainly geared for our you know general dentistry population, um, I think anybody that has an interest in dentistry could could probably tune in and and, and learn a few things and and uh, would probably really enjoy some of the stuff that we talk about. Tell us about any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about. Well, one of the things uh, you know, one of the things that. Um, that I'm working on. Of course, I mentioned that I'm with the Academy of General Dentistry and each year we have a scientific session. This just this past month, we were in Las Vegas for our big meeting and next year we're going to be in Minneapolis. I'm the chairman of the meeting that, that puts on that show. We, we have about 3000 folks that come out and see us. And that's the main thing that I'm doing right now. And, and I guess one of the things that I'd like to point out is that um, it may not uh, directly affect your listeners, but it certainly indirectly affects your listeners because their dentists are coming out to our show and they're getting some wonderful educational and learning opportunities where they can learn new and great stuff that they can bring back to their to their patients and, and many people that might be listening to your podcast here. Uh, that's the main thing that I'm working on. Of course, we're always working on the podcast and trying to refine that. As you know, uh, you've got a great show here that you've got some great listeners and you know the work that goes into that and, and talking to different guests and things like that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we're getting ready for the, the next upcoming uh, school year, 
course, uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll start back at NYU, where I'm really excited about that. It's always great to go back and have some uh, new faces to see there and some exciting new things to do. So a lot of irons in the fire, Chris, um, and, and really looking forward to, to some of the upcoming stuff we got going on. So people can keep up with everything that you're up to, throw out your contact information. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, um, one of the things that we didn't talk about or we um, is that, uh, you know, for, for someone that might want to be, for one of your younger listeners out there that might be interested in dental education, um, I'm going to give my, I'll give my contact information out. But anybody that might have some questions about that, Curtis, they can be, they can uh, feel free to contact me at drgeorge98 at Gmail. So drgeorge98 at Gmail. And for anybody that might be interested in how that process works and how you might apply to dental school and what you can expect and all that kind of stuff. Uh, because like I said, I've, I've basically taught dental education at every level. I'd be happy to share that information with your listeners if they want to reach out and get a hold of me. Uh, or if they have any other questions about uh, dentistry in general, uh, I'm, all, I'm always available for that. So drgeorge98 at Gmail is the best way to get a hold of me, Curtis. Okay, we'll close us out with some final thoughts. Maybe if there was something that I forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about or just any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Well, you know, final thoughts, I guess. Uh, I think we covered a lot of good stuff there. I think that'd probably be the big thing there that we we, we didn't get a chance too much to touch on. But I know there's some some great, uh, exciting young folks out there that, that um, you know, maybe need some direction or some advice and things like that to to, uh, to get involved because dentistry is a great profession. Uh, we, we think it's a great profession. It's a way that you can reach out and touch people's lives, change their lives with their smile and things like that to be involved in the, you know, the oral health of the general population. There's so many different things that you can do in dentistry, not just practice dentistry, but you can teach and you can do research and all that. And, uh, and I just want to encourage any of, any of your younger listeners or older listeners for that matter uh, to consider coming out. And uh, you know, if, they, if they're interested in, in uh, the medical type field, um, you know, to, to do some research and, 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 and get involved. We're always looking for some, you know, brilliant new minds to join the field. And, uh, and I'm looking forward, like I said, it's an exciting time for dentistry, Curtis, and we're looking forward to the future and, and all the new things that we have coming out there that, that we may be uh, able to uh, help, help the general public with. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. George J. Smith, please be sure to check him out and if you know of somebody that's interested in getting into dentistry or if you yourself are, you know, he gave out his contact information. So please reach out to him. Check out his podcast. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, cjackson102 at cox.net is the place to send them. And as always, thank you for listening. And Dr. Schmidt, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Curtis. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream. dream.